All right, continuing on with the model, um, new shirt. We're going to add in government and net exports, and that should uh, complete most of the model with lots of modifications, as I'm sure. So do you hate it yet? Do you hate it? Do you hate the formula? Seeing it too much, you hate it? Stick with it. It explains a lot of what's going on. And if you stick with this formula, you start seeing everything in terms of formulas, and everything becomes a lot simpler. Wave plus new haircut equals complement. That's exactly right. All right, so let's get going. What we have so far is what's called the private closed economy, because we haven't dealt with the government at all. That's the private. We haven't dealt with net exports at all, the idea that there's anyone else in the world. So, so far, our economy is basically an anarchy, right? No government, and it has a huge wall around our country. There's no net exports. We're going to break down that wall, we're going to invite back the government, and we're going to complete the model. So adding in the public sector, that'll add in government spending. We're going to add in net exports, open up the economy, and we'll have all the spending accounted for. All right, in terms of government spending, the government essentially does two things that directly affect our model. The first thing it does is spend. It spends tons of money, $3 trillion a year. Um, and the second thing it does is taxes us. And what taxes does is, or what taxes do, is affects our income and affects our spending. So when the government spends money on goods and services, tanks, teachers, napalm, whatever, um, that gets added into our GDP. So again, in 2011, government spent around $3 trillion. We simply go to the G number, we cross it out, and we put in $3 trillion. It really is pretty much that simple. When we have to deal with taxes, it's a little bit more complicated, but not much more complicated. When the government taxes us, it takes away our income. And um, conversely, when the government cuts our taxes, it's giving us more disposable income. And that winds up affecting our spending, because again, spending is mostly a function of what our income is. So we'll take an example and I'll show you how to work through a similar type of example. Let's say you have an income of $10,000. Let's say you have a marginal propensity to consume of 80% or 0.8. And let's say the government cuts your taxes by $1,000. All right, so you're happy and we're gonna figure out how much more money you're gonna spend. Now, it might seem easy for you. You might just uh, have done some mathematical thing in your head. I'm gonna show you the mathematical thing that you just did in your head. So again, we have that tax cut of $1,000. We know that your MPC is 0 0.8, and we know the formula for MPC. It's the change in consumption divided by the change in disposable income. So what we have for our formula is 0 0.8, that is MPC. We know that that's equal to the change in consumption, and that's what we're solving for here, divided by the change in disposable income. And in this example, that change in disposable income is plus $1,000. Right? You just got a $1,000 tax cut, so your income went up by $1,000. Well, we can cross-multiply, multiply each side by 1000 and we're going to get a formula that looks like this. Your change in consumption is equal to 0 0.8 times $1,000. That means your change in consumption is going to be equal to $800. So as a result of that $1,000 tax cut, you're going to spend $800. Now notice that's different than if the government had just taken that money and spent it. If the government spends the $1,000, all of it goes into the income stream. But if the government cuts taxes by $1,000, only a piece of it, the part that people spend, their MPC, goes into the income stream. The other part winds up getting saved. All right, so we dealt with government, and we'll talk more about them coming back. Our last component of GDP is net exports. And again, net exports are exports minus imports. So if net exports um, have it such that we have exports that exceed our imports, if we sell more of our stuff than we buy from other countries, you can see just from the formula that the net export number is going to be a positive number, and that's going to add to our GDP. If imports are greater than exports, we're going to get the opposite thing. Look at the formula, we're going to get a negative number, and that's going to subtract from our GDP. Now, our net exports in actuality are pretty much always negative. And I could just show you the graph of what they've looked like since, uh, let's say, around 1950. And you can see that, except for some brief little moments, um, 
our net exports have been basically negative. And since the late 1990s, you can see what's really gone on with our net exports as the world's opened up. Um, it's just the case that we like to buy other people's stuff more than they like to buy our stuff. A, a lot of that is oil from the Middle East, um, but nevertheless, um, net exports for us is pretty much a drain on our GDP, and you can see why. Well, there's three major determinants for net exports, three major things that determine whether they go up or down. Um, the first one's prosperity abroad. And the idea here is that we want foreigners to do well. We want them to do well for their own sake, but they, we want them to do well because it's good for us. You know, you can imagine that everyone in Britain won the lottery. Well, they're going to want to start buying stuff. They're going to buy British stuff and German stuff, but they're also going to start buying our stuff. Um, and that's going to raise our exports. So when we get prosperity abroad, our net exports tend to rise. When there's any kind of tariff that's tax on trade or trade barriers, that's typically a drain on net exports, depending on how it goes, how it affects our imports and exports. Um, what we're going to see towards the end of the year is that economists don't really like these things um, because they usually have negative consequences for the countries involved. But anytime we start messing with trade, that can obviously affect net exports. And then third, we have exchange rates. Now, exchange rates you might have come in contact with if you've ever traveled to another country. And again, we're going to talk more about these towards the end of the year when we get into international economics. But essentially what an exchange rate is, is a conversion between one country's currency and another country's currency. So if you've ever had to trade currency while traveling, you've gone to one of these currency exchange booths that list all the various currency prices and you turn in your dollars and you get whatever other currency you're changing it into. Well, I'm going to give you the bottom line, and you can see what it is on the screen. The bottom line is that when our currency appreciates, goes up in value, our net exports drop, which might seem counterintuitive, but I'll show you why. And when our currency depreciates, when it goes down in value against other currencies, our net exports tend to rise. So we're going to work through an example, and hopefully you can see why that is as we go through. So let's say there's a television in the United States, and there's a television in Japan, and they're exactly the same television. Same make, same model, same everything. Just one happens to be one place, and the one other has to be, happens to be in another place. And let's say that that US TV sells for $200, and in Japan, they don't use dollars, they use yen. So in Japan, they're selling the television for 300 yen. Just so you can picture it, there it is. Well, let's say the current exchange rate is one dollar for one yen. Now, that's not the exchange rate. It's very far from that, but I wanted to pick some simple numbers. If you do a little math in your mind, or even with some paper, what you'll see is that that television is a lot cheaper in the United States the way things are now. 300 yen converted to dollars would simply be $300, and $200 would be 200 yen. So what that means is that if you can buy this TV from wherever you want, people are going to buy it from us. We're going to buy it from us, but also Japanese people are going to buy that television from here, right? That's going to become an export. That's going to help our net exports. Well, let's say that time goes by and the exchange rate changes. We'll talk about uh, why that happens towards the end of the year. Let's say that a dollar is now equal to two yen. We call that appreciation. The dollar is now worth more. It used to be worth one yen, but now it's stronger. It's worth two yen. Depreciation is the opposite. In fact, here we'd say the yen depreciated. It used to only take one yen to get a dollar. Now it's taking two yen to get a dollar. We'll use this exchange rate and take a look at those prices for those televisions again. That Japanese television now only costs $150 because by this exchange rate, you'd only have to turn in $150 to get those 300 yen. And in the United States, that television that says $200 on it, if you're a Japanese person, that's going to cost you 400 yen. So you can see that the television is now actually cheaper in, the, in Japan than it is in the United States. The TVs didn't change and the price tags didn't change, but that exchange rate changed and that changed the relative costs of these things in these various countries. We'll go back to the formula for net exports. Ex it's exports minus imports. And if now this television is more expensive, and by the way, every other good is going to be as well, you know, between trade um, between us and Japan, 
um, you can see that our exports are generally going to drop, our imports are going to go up, we're going to start buying this TV in Japan, and so our net exports are going to fall um, because the dollars appreciate it. And I'll leave it to you to work through the opposite possibility, you know, that depreciation happens and to see if you could figure out why our net exports would actually start to rise if that was the case. All right, well, we're going to stop it there, and next time I'm going to show you something actually pretty cool um, called the multiplier. See you then. Well, that was a waste of time. Jamie, school is never a waste of time. Since we have 15 minutes until recess, please put down your pencils and stare at the front of the room.